Family Connections now gives you the ability to create work activity reports with incredible ease. The work activity reports allow you to quickly see the number of connections identified and located during a time period, plus any supporters or potential placements discovered. You can also track the number and types of engagements. Let's go work on David Jenkins' case. Every time we enter information into a placeholder, whether it's a name or a label like unknown aunt, the system will count that as a new connection in our work activity report. If we have information to enter about our new connection, Shay Walters, these two fields are important to the report. A checked box is an affirmative answer that will be counted in the report. A box left blank is a negative answer. That means the person is not related or not previously known to the child and will also be included in the report. When we check the boxes that indicate that an address, email, or phone number has been verified, that act will count toward the number of people with verified contact details in the report. Once we've contacted this new connection, we indicate that by going to Engagement and then clicking on Contacted. This initial contact will now also be included in our work activity report. As soon as we click on Contacted, a date and timestamp appears. If at any point we accidentally click on Not Contacted and need to click back to Contacted, the timestamp will change to the current time. To correct a mistake to the timestamp, we can go into Edit Person Details and scroll to the very bottom to Advanced Details. Here we can reset the date and timestamp manually. Every time we engage with Shay through an email or call, or add to our own notes. That information is added to the work activity report. Following our initial contact with Shay Walters, that's given us a better idea of what role she might play in David's life. We can update her person status using the color bar at the top of the workspace. Shay indicated to us that she is happy to support David by driving him to after school activities. So we mark her as a potential supporter. This change in person status will also appear in our report. Let's head to Reports and take a look at the work that has been done so far this month on David Jenkins' case. Click on Reports in the top menu bar. We can run a report for any time period. If we wanted to see last month's activity, we would leave the date range as it is. But today we're interested in seeing the work activity for the month of November. So we set the date range to November 1st through November 21st. Then we click on the download button next to David's name. This creates a CSV file that can be opened in Excel or a similar spreadsheet program. If you're using Google Chrome as your browser, the newly created file will appear at the bottom left-hand corner of the page. If you're using another browser, check your computer's downloads for the CSV file. The top three rows are basic information about this case. The rows below show the work activity for our indicated date range. Under Status, we see the six different categories of status. And in the column to the right, we see the number of people who have been newly given each type of status during the time period of November 1st through November 21st. The newly created connections can be found here. Your organization might call this identified. Remember that a newly created connection occurs when information is entered into a placeholder, like when we added Shea Walters. The verified details can be found here. Your organization might call this located. Remember that we verified Shea Walters' details by clicking on the verify phone number box next to her phone number. And she is now included here as a person with verified details. The number of people contacted for the first time can be found here. Remember that indicating that a connection has been contacted is a manual action. If we forgot to click on contacted and don't see a date and timestamp beneath the contacted button, that information will not be included in the report. Finally, the number and types of engagements can be found here. Looking to the right, the first column of data is for all people. For this time period, we identified two potential supporters of David and two potential placements. We created 14 connections, 
and were able to verify the contact information of eight people. We logged notes three times, calls seven times, and emails two times. The remaining columns to the right break down further the all people information into two main categories, all relatives and all non-relatives. Each of those categories has two subcategories, previously known to child and not previously known to child. Remember we indicated whether a person was previously known to the child when we checked the boxes in the person's details section. Of the potential supporters identified this month, both of them were non-relatives, one previously known to David and one not previously known to him. We hope that the work activity reports will be helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us through Family Connections.